Welcome to the Speak Your Peace podcast. My name is Ian McNaughton, uh, Big E here. Uh, we have two very special guests with us. Uh, first joining us is SYP creator Scott. Scott, how are you tonight? Doing well. I'm excited. We have a, a big week of content ahead, but this is uh, day one of it. So looking forward to it. Should be good. Uh, also joining us are is SYP creator Ravisher. Ravisher is, is back for another pod. And then also joining us is Cal McDonald. Who we all know and what and and love really Callum is pretty cool <laughs> big uh, fan of the show big fan of the show Callum McDonald uh so Scott uh before I get let you introduce our guest uh I mean Rav welcome on the pod anytime he's with speak your piece so like Rav's just welcome anytime uh I, I'm just gonna say it the name of this podcast is Ian's strained his back and he is sore and pretty much uh that's going to be the title episode because I am sore and I strained my back. And uh, the, the doctor in ER yesterday on Monday told me he slept with an alien. So that was cool. Um, Are you sure he was a doctor? <laughs> he, had, he, had, he had doctor on the badge that he was wearing. So like, I, I'm just going to go with it. Uh, Scott, why are Rab and Callum on the podcast tonight? Rav and Callum are here tonight because it was, I think it was a month or two ago. I decided to um, give out a free podcast appearance to whoever went seven and zero on Saturday selections. And sure enough, these two, these two decided to go seven and zero. And um, so they're, and I think Callum, that was his first of two consecutive wins back to back weeks. So I'm going to shout Cal- Callum might be the greatest Saturday selections player of all time. Like he's I'll, like the Jordan. I'll take that title. He's like the Jordan of Saturday I think, selections. Uh, I think there was like an eight week, seven, six to seven like week span where like me and my roommates just won. Like one of us won every week. We were just on a tear. Yeah. <laughs> we were just ruining you guys or ruin everyone. But That's Cal, yeah. Cal, I was going to say, Callum is like, he gets on a heater and he'll go like two or three weeks in a row and he'll just steal selection. So and no, I will no big say deal. No big deal. The third week, uh, the, the third week, you're about to go three three and oh but you actually went two and five the week you you lost yeah i did do pretty bad that week yeah i actually thought i was gonna win this week i was pretty pumped uh gabe had to go uh five and oh kind of pissed not gonna lie because i went four and one Um, yeah you were you were close gabe was undefeated though that was yeah Yeah. i'll I'll, wednesday wednesday and saturday wednesday and saturday yeah wednesday and saturday um so callum callum's actually a pretty big deal um (laughs) Because no, no, I'm trying to be serious. I'm trying to be genuine here for a second. So, okay. Ka- so Callum, expl- for, for people don't, that don't know, explain what you've been doing during the pandemic, and explain uh, what you do at UBCO because you are a UBCO student. So, in case people aren't familiar with you, explain what it is that you do and what it is you have been doing for last six months. Yeah. So I've uh, I'm a nursing student at UBCO. And uh, after coming home after exams, I picked up a job as a like an immunizer for the COVID. So I've been working around Vancouver. Uh, I picked up my first shift in Squamish to actually work Thursday in Pemberton, uh, giving vaccines to people. Today, I was actually one of the first people in BC to give a Moderna or Pfizer vaccine to someone who had AstraZeneca before. That is now perfectly acceptable. Um, you're also allowed to mix the two doses now. Um, so if you had Pfizer for your first one or Moderna for your first one. You can have the other one for the second one. So things are moving and heating up pretty quick. And it's looking, it's looking like we're going to get out of this pandemic pretty soon. Yeah, knock on wood. Uh, do you have a favorite vaccine? Uh, I got, I have both of my doses are Pfizer. Ah, um, yes. Welcome to the club. Yes. So there's no really difference between Pfizer and Moderna. <laughs> the only no. difference is uh, Pfizer is a 0.3 milliliter uh, vaccine and Moderna is a 0.5. So there's just a little more liquid in Moderna. Other than that, they're pretty much identical. Uh, yeah, we're a, we're a pro Pfizer. We are a pro uh, Pfizer here. Here oh, yeah, on, on Speak Your Peace. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, Callum, is what can, are you allowed to tell us like your best story of giving a vaccine or like a really entertaining person that you've dealt with in, in dishing out a vaccine? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, as long as I'm not telling you where I work or... No, no, you don't have to say where, you don't have to say who. You could just You could just say, like, a, a person so, of interest. There's this one person, and he uh, came towards the end of the day, and he's just chilling with me. Um, we didn't have many vaccines at that point. So he's, you know, we're just talking it out. I'm making sure he understands fully what he's getting into, like the side effects... 
and we ended up talking about um, Squamish. He was like, oh yeah, I got to drive home after this. Um, and he got super excited. He's like, oh my God, like, do you know Backcountry? Oh you know, yeah, brewery? I'm like, yeah, I, like, I love it. And so he gets super into it and he's just so thankful. He's like, man, you're the best. Like, I can't believe you're doing this. This is awesome. And I like, I poke him and he's like, you did it? Like, I didn't even feel it. Like, that was crazy. <laughs> so he, he, get, he gets up and he is like yelling. He looks at the line and he's like, you guys want this guy? He's amazing. He's great. <laughs> really? and, uh, yeah. Let's go. And uh, I'm like, okay. Like, yeah, hype me up. Hype me up. Um, <laughs> and uh, so he goes into the recovery area and uh, I happen to walk by him. He's like, Calm, Calm, Calm. Like, um, do you want me to sign this? Or like, can do us like, cause he has this little blue card for vaccinations. Like, no man, like I don't got to touch that. That's all yours. Like, damn, like wanted your signature. And I go, oh, thanks. And uh, <laughs> at this particular location, uh, my table happens to be by a window. So he leaves and he's walking by the window. And he starts banging on the window <laughs> and waving. <laughs> and he's waving. He's like, he's going crazy and nuts. And I'm like about to get a vaccine. So I'm like, eh. <laughs> but I, honestly, like he, he hyped me up big time. So <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a big ego boost right there. It's it weird. was a big ego boost. No kidding. Oh, I must man. say, people are just generally happy. Like when I went to get my vaccine last week, um, people were just generally happy. So the fact is, that's like an extreme example. But I don't do that. Yeah, honestly, it's, it's people get stuck. You love to see it, really. You love to see the positive vibes go around in a vaccine clinic. Yeah, I agree. It's it's a lot easier when people are like stoked to get it rather than like you know, like what grade eight or nine we had those vaccines. Yeah. Which we didn't really like. If we didn't get it, wasn't a huge factor, um, like because like none of us are going around and getting tetanus. But like this one, I think most people like <laughs> like realize like wow, if I get this one, it's gonna come to an end soon. So they're all like, super excited to get it. It's so much easier to give it to someone who's like, yeah, yeah, poke me, <laughs> rather than like yeah. you know crying and all that. So it's been yeah. like really good, and like I haven't seen many difficult patients. Uh, most of them have been like super easy to deal with and like super excited. That's good. It's good to hear, man. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're contributing, that you're doing your part in getting us back to normal. Uh, you love to see it. Um, Scott, do you have anything else, Rav, anything else you want to say to Cal about his nursing? I mean, we used to, not to say that we used to, we still kind of razzed him for being a nursing <clears throat> student, but like. Yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, let me, let me explain this. I'm in a profession where it's like 95% woman. That's it? That, that, that's all? That's, that's yeah, all you're saying? I don't know. How many communication writers are there at SFU in your course, Ian? It's not SFU anymore. It's, yeah, I'm not at SFU CIT anymore. Student. It's, it's, it's this guy left. Yeah, I transferred. So I, Where did you uh, transfer to? BCIT. BCIT. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's where I got my vaccine. Oh, yeah. So uh, uh, I, 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 I actually have never been on campus at BCIT. So awesome. I can't tell you what the male to female ratio is. Um, however, believe it or not, in my sports broadcasting class, there were, I think there were three females in the class. How many total? 18, 20. That's, that's a good ratio, Ian. Yeah. Um, you love to see, you know, women in sports. Three. Great job, everybody. Love to see males in nursing. Mm. all 12 of them <laughs> i will say callum's also in one of the best nursing programs in canada arguably at ubco okay ubco student we get it your school's great <laughs> ha ha great ubco students wear ubc merch yeah yeah because you guys are all the same it's all equal they don't sell the ubco hoodies or otherwise i, I don't get one i know <laughs> that's what <laughs> It's, it's that's pretty funny. Funny. That's, how, that's how funny. useless we are. They don't even make sweaters for us. <laughs> it's just a different campus. Like SFU, you can just take classes at both campuses, just commute. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but commute like, okay, but like okay, but like okay, but like the, the Surrey and Vancouver campuses for SFU are different than like the Cologne. <laughs> I'm not joking, I'm joking, obviously. Where so. is there another is there another uh UBC campus outside? Oh, uh, like the one downtown, but like it there's does. one in Bamfield. Uh it's, it's like a 
like the Marine Sciences Center. So technically UBC, um, <clears throat> like campus, but it's just like for one specific program sort of thing. Band I know there's a campus downtown, but like the main campus uh, is it's, like. Ian, it's kind of near, it's on the island. It's sort of near Port Alberni-ish. Okay. It's on the West Coast for sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Scott, did you say Port Hardy? Hashtag Alberni. Provincials? Oh. Oh, so you guys went provincials. Yeah, like, you got you guys played hockey good. together. Yeah, yeah, we went to provincials and we lost every single game. But Calum got yeah. to the Saskatoon Blades camp. Let's go. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> he had like eight points in three games or whatever it was. So yeah, I was I was a high beast. You Wasn't were. that also when you came back from Argentina and you were in absolutely no shape to like partake in this was, this was while I was in Argentina. They oh, phoned, this is while you're still there. They phoned me, uh, my like my parents, and they're like, "Yeah, hey can we talk to Cal?" I'm like, "Uh, no, <laughs> it's kind of like in a different continent." <laughs> like that makes sense. Like that's why we can't find any information on him for this year. He's just not here. Yeah, then, no, um, elite, elite, elite prospects had trouble tracking you then. When do you have uh, an elite prospects page? <laughs> I, I actually think I might have a prospects page. I'm, gonna, I'm, 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 I'm right here. Let me just find this. Elite Pull prospect. that up, Rav, and see. Pull if it Cal, up, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, and see if cal has got an elite prospects page. But I yeah, no, that idea. definitely would be difficult. It's like, yeah, fuck, this kid was doing great in junior, and then all of a sudden he just buggered off to Argentina. Like, <laughs> not, like Wouldn't that's not gonna change improve it. His, yeah, that's like that's not gonna improve his WHL draft stock. Like, what the fuck are we doing here? Let's be honest here. I was never gonna make the team. Nah, dude. You don't know that, man. You don't, you don't know, know that. that. That's true um I, I was gonna say do you have any good hockey memories or, or moment big moments from uh, squamish minor hockey that you can share on the podcast well, there's, that... better be, there's better be a few good ones here Kellen. yeah there's um, obviously there's a few good ones i mean you guys remember scott remember that one time we were at provincials and keith got so angry he punched a wall and yeah. broke his hand broke his hand yeah i remember that <laughs> <laughs> this kid was so angry we were losing he took himself out of the game for us that's a true teammate. He, 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 pulled, <laughs> he, he, he pulled a Kyle move pretty much where he Basically. actually he punched the drywall in the in the room. Yeah. And then and then the next game or something, uh, Jason is in net and he's playing as he always does. So one massive hole between his legs. <laughs> and Logan Newfeld is pissed off. And we go back into the change room. And they start fighting to the point where our coach comes in and is screaming and he gets mad at Logan and he kicks Logan off the team at provincials. Logan <laughs> walks out of the change room with all his gear on and just goes home. Skates included. He walked on the pavement with skates on. Yeah. He just walked really, home. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then uh, our coach ripped out Jason for not punching back. <laughs> I don't remember that part, but I, yeah, it was something he, like that. He <laughs> got mad at Jason. He's like, Jason, what are you doing? Why would you let him hit you like that or something like that? I was like, lol. <laughs> and then we proceeded to lose. But I, I remember just him coming into the room, screaming. Logan just like blank face. Just, what are you doing, man? And then he just walks out of the room and I never see him again, basically. Like, not to your goalie, no matter what they're doing. Like, you yeah, gotta... can never do that to your goalie, regardless. Never to your goalie. Just, yeah, it's like... It doesn't matter who you are. Come on, man. Uh, those are a couple good ones off the top of my head. I'm sure there's lots others. But uh, you saw what saw what happened to D'Angelo. <laughs> you fought Corky after the game. That one didn't work out. Well, <laughs> sure, but I mean, I don't know if comparing Tony D'Angelo to Logan Newfeld is really the 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 smartest thing to do. I don't know if they're quite the same <laughs> individuals, and maybe maybe they're both you know pro Trumper. <laughs> political yeah junkies. we'll make assumptions about this kid yeah i, I don't know i played with his brother oliver uh he was on my team for a year and he was kind of like a poor man's kevin in terms of a hockey player like not as good of a slap shot not as good kevin of a pass disrespected so much on this no point. kevin was really good <laughs> kevin no kevin was actually yeah. like really good um uh, oliver was not quite as good as kevin but i liked kevin so kevin's a workhorse Kevin is a workhorse. Is that what Kevin is? Is a workhorse? Kevin's yeah. a workhorse. That he man gives third line everything. Minutes in, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah That's that probably a step down from when he was, you know, the captain of the Pee Wee House C1 team. 
Oh, I was in the, I was, uh, so I was vaccinating people in Brennan Park today. Yes. I kept looking up at the banners, seeing all my names. Funny, Ian, I didn't see your name up there. <laughs> you know, I thought they would have retired my jersey after the classic <laughs> anemia thing, but, you know, believe it or not, oh, they, uh, they declined to do so. Well, yeah, I thought they had that banner up there for a couple of years. I was like, Ian's blood doesn't work. <laughs> but I think they might have took that down. <laughs> that was kind of like that was kind of like a running update. Damn. That was kind of like a running update. It's like a scoreboard, like like you know, like the the uh, like a scoreboard that's like counter or, or like daily. Like no, Ian's blood's not working right now. Oh yeah, then didn't you make that? You had a Make a Wish Foundation wish. Yeah, we where you w- put on the blimp in that like repeating electric thing, like haha, my blood doesn't work, or was. Was it something like that? <laughs> no, that's not what I did with Make Wish, but also uh, Make Wish rocked a bit more yeah. than. Went to baseball Hall of Fame in New York. Yes, right? I went to uh, I went to upstate New York. I went to Rangers Penguins game five of the first round at Madison Square Garden. Uh, went to a Yankees Mets game at Yankee Stadium. That's hype. Yeah, I'm glad you. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad we're. Uh, I'm glad you're on our podcast to you know compliment me not critical or anything anyways um so we discussed hockey this is a good segue then let's talk about the nhl and let's talk about the toronto maple leafs first that's our first uh, actual real planned segment uh the toronto maple leafs blowing a 3-1 series lead to the montreal canadians capping it off with a unwatchable pretty much 3-1 loss to the habs on monday night um scott it's a good thing we got Corey wilson shmuel on the podcast last week when i'm pretty sure he said yeah we're going all the way to the top four and yeah. they're out um scott your initial thoughts on the Habs beating the leafs well um carry price was an absolute brick wall to be fair for the most part um the price was right. The price was right. And did John Tavares being gone, ha- like, contribute to this loss? Maybe. It might have helped a bit. But the fact is, the Leafs were built to be deep enough and to be able to beat at least one team in the playoff round. And the team, maybe, yeah, they they would have beaten the Oilers for sure. But the, I don't know. I just don't know what happened. Uh, I, I don't know if there's any team they beat for sure at this point. Yeah. That's like, it. I just don't even know. What do you, who do you beat for sure if you're going to do this? Yeah. The Anaheim Ducks? Not, not even them. I, I, not with, hey, not with Gibson and that. Cause remember, they couldn't get by uh, good goalie, right? So, well, yeah, I was going to say the other thing is that like the Montreal Canadiens haven't beat the Red Wings in like over 800 days. And so, you know, by <laughs> proxy of Montreal beating Toronto and Montreal not having beat Detroit, technically Detroit is beating Toronto. Just throwing that out there. Um, the here, viewers, we don't understand. Detroit hasn't played Montreal or Toronto in probably two years. So Ian's what Ian's saying has a little bit of. Uh, little I sc- said I said by proxy. I didn't say it was official. I just said it was by proxy. <laughs> um, I don't know what you do if you're Toronto. I don't know what you do if you're the Maple Leafs. Like, run it back next year, I guess, and go for it. Callum, what are your thoughts on the I mean, Maple Leafs? Yeah, that's it's just embarrassing at this point. Like you have what four players above 42 points. Montreal had one and it was Tyler fucking to Foley. Yep. To Foley. Like the yes. Leafs have what Matthews, Marner, Nylander, Tavares. I got Riley and then Hyman's Riley. top Hyman. six forward now. Spets have fucking put up 30 points league minimum. Yeah. League minimum, dude. Like that is ridiculous. I know a lot of people uh, have been like saying like, oh, like trade Marner. Don't trade Marner. You cannot trade Mitch Marner. Are you kidding me? Like, why would you do that to yourself? I think you run it back and you just like hope they gain experience. I mean, obviously you we've gotta, been hoping yeah. they've been getting experience from the last couple seven game seven loot losses, but I, I guess not. Um, but yeah, it's embarrassing when <clears throat> your, your team is by far the best in the your, your division. And it's like the worst defensive division in the world, like in the NHL. And you face possibly the worst team in the in the playoffs. And you lose a three-one series. Yeah. 
like do you you gotta wonder if like the least players are just in the locker room after game six being like oh fuck's gonna happen I said I said it after game six I'm like there's no way Toronto is winning game set like when you blow game six it's like Toronto's not winning game seven right no confidence yeah. you have no confidence like, like you you're yeah here, like here we go again boys we're going through the cycle all over again and I just I I honestly, I, I said this after last night. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I don't, because when, when you finish the season, you're like, okay, what do we need to do to improve next season? It's like, this was your team. This was your chance. And it didn't work out. You gotta like, you gotta work on it with the guys or something. Like this can't keep happening every single year. Like Mitch, you gotta work with Mitch. You can't like, he, you gotta work with him to like be, I don't know, just maybe take the pressure off, like off him, because I know the, the guy cares. Obviously, you saw what he, like after he took the the fucking yeah. uh, delay a game penalty. You saw like in the box, he definitely was pissed. But like, you can't do that with that with the stupid ten nine three junior number. Like, you can't do it. You can't like it. It. There is something, something I heard. I, I can't remember who I heard it from, but like Marner has five puck over glass penalties in his entire playoff career and like five goals yeah and five like, goals he hasn't scored in his past 16 yeah like something something ridiculous like that like and i think i think it was jay fresh who put out there like the odds of the maple leaves losing all of these elimination games in the last five six years like the odds like the odds of it happening was 1.3 percent i think jay fresh oh. said then oh, like the like how it played out had a 1.3 percent chance of happening so i don't know if you could just it's really difficult to just say yeah we just got unlucky and just keep going forward that that's and and then here's here's another thing too is that matthews and martin are elite players in this league don't like no one can argue that here correct no no okay there we go so the fact is like you look at someone i hate to compare them to like ovechkin and backstrom but they didn't win the cup ov won it in his 14th year right and Matthews mm-hmm. is in what year six, like five or six. <clears throat> so I just got to give the team time, let them, for, let them develop, let them, I hate to say it, be patient, but like Callum said before, maybe we have to run it back, new, more experience. They're going to be older, wiser, bigger, faster, stronger. <clears throat> maybe Mitch, get, and, yeah. Mitch and Austin got to work on this all summer, dude. You can't, this is, this can't happen with that payroll. <laughs> It's, like if you yeah. if you want like if the issues help you don't take you take a bridge deal and then you take the big money after because yeah. you want you can like take the, <laughs> take the bridge deal now you could have had I guess more players you don't have to pay a first for Felino because that was <laughs> stupid so it, like that was the biggest gamble and obviously look how that worked he couldn't even play after the games he was injured and yeah the other games well he fought Corey and one Corey Perry and one for no reason I mean I guess <laughs> like it, I guess it's maybe because like they're there wasn't any intent. I mean, everyone watching the, like the Perry Tavares thing, there wasn't any intent, but like, maybe oh, just yeah. like nothing happened afterwards, I guess. So that's fair. Yeah. But like, I don't know, Felino, that, that first round, like, I mean, it's going to be a later first round. It's a bottom half. It's first round or this year. Or was it this year or is it next year? This year, I believe. This year. Huh? Uh, I'm on cap friend. Let me see this. It is pick traded. Yep. That's it. They're, they're, so that pick could literally be anybody because this draft is so open. It could literally be a franchise talent. It could also Ol- just be at Aturati could fall down. Yeah, he he could. <laughs> Ol- Ol- There's a lot Ol- of guys down there. Olin Zellweger, Everett Silvertips defenseman, could go. There's a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys. Yeah. Columbus. Anyways. Um, I also want to deep get... draft in the sense that there's a lot of quality players, but there's no like elite Highland. That's the point. I guess that's what Dubas was thinking when he did the trade. It's like there's there, we don't know what we want. So if you give it up for a chance to get like a guy like Felino, it can give us, I guess, more grit. I mean, he's not scoring. I, I just remember like, I uh, dude, Leafs fans are so delusional with the, 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 the all Galchenyuk's gonna come in, he's gonna be point per game. Oh, and then obviously, he wasn't because it's fucking Galchenyuk. And then Felino comes in, like, plays with Matthews and Marner and gets like four points in four games. And then they're like, oh, this guy's point per game, this guy's gonna be sick for us in the playoffs. And obviously, when you put someone against those guys in a no pressure situation, you're gonna be fu- you're gonna be point per game. Yeah, I don't hear anybody criticizing the Riley Nash trade, and he didn't get anything. No, but um, <laughs> I, I also, I also wanted to act like give some love to the Montreal Canadiens 
who did battle back from a 3-1 deficit. Carey Price, like Scott said, was outstanding. Uh, shout out the young guns, uh, my hero, Cole Caulfield, Jasperi Kakaniemi. Um, the defense was just terrific. Oh, yeah, dude. Denol and, and the, played amazing defense. Denol played an mm-hmm. amazing. I thought Jacob Evans had a really good se- uh, series. Yeah. Um, shout, Brennan Gallagher was, getting getting almost yeah. a, a game-winning goal. Five. Goal um, against I just remember like texting Ian before game five, like they're playing Gustafson over Romanov, and now Gustafson played the last three games. They won every one. Yeah. And so I guess Very like good. I just can't believe that because I I think this guy's like one of the most brutal defenders in the league. <laughs> and like the, the the fact that the moment he comes in, they don't lose is insane. I mean, he only played six minutes in game six. I don't even know about game seven, but he. He got a point on the parry goal, so I mean, game seven, his his like game seven, he would go on and Toronto would throw on Marner and Matthews, and he would immediately change. Yeah, no, that's that's what you got to do though. Yeah, that's what you got to do with someone is like like him, especially like Gustafson's at like full on. He like the guy can't defend. Like put it nicely, man. The guy can't defend for shit. But like he, that's why he's only playing the little time. That's why he's on the power play, and like he was on the power play because the guy is. I mean, he's good offensively. That's why they got him. I don't know. I don't know about the cap hit for the future, but I mean, it worked for the past three games. Well, and... He might be going to uh, Seattle. That's a whole other. <laughs> anyway, um, to your point, Calum. Again, like as soon as um, Gustafson w- would see Mount Ernst Matthews, he'd jump off. But you would see, you know, Weber, Sherratt, um, Edmondson, Petrie come on. But you'd also see like Danol and Gallagher, and I think it was Tatar for a bit too. But Danol did the such big a one. job shutting down. Matthews and Martin. Matthews only had one goal. Martin had nothing. I don't even think he'd have had a point. This I, don't even, I was going to say, I don't even think Matthews had a scoring chance like in the first period. He had one in the there second. Like yeah. that, that like Gustafson doesn't have his... I swear Gustafson had like a large contract, but he doesn't. Yeah. Also, Jack Campbell, why do people think he's so good? Nah, he's he's good. <laughs> he's, he's good. Like he's good, but like people are like he went eleven and up one like in John the Gibson. regular season. Like I mean, game. the guys like I don't put any. There's nothing you can blame this guy for. The guy has a what? Let me pull it up. Yeah, I think it was one point eight. Yeah, the same, if not he's, better he, stats than Price had. Oh, yeah, because no, before played, game he six, he played good. So I think I think Toronto fans put so much trust in him because he had that insane run. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, he's honestly like he's and a good he's goalie. and he's also a really nice guy, by the way. I oh, think he's, he's just really a nice like a average starting goalie on a good. Run I agree, right uh, but like I the way he played this like this playoffs and and the that's a weak goaltending that that mm-hmm. that's actually yeah. elite. So he wasn't I don't blame the, Leafs. He wasn't the issue at all. I don't blame oh, Leafs no. fans for getting all hyped about that. To be honest, just because like I mean they haven't gotten good goaltending. <laughs> I mean maybe maybe Fred Freddy, Fred's Freddy. for the past four years, but they haven't gotten like good goaltending in the playoffs like that. That's you, you haven't gone playoff goaltending like that before. Also, I think their defense improved this year, which says something. With yeah. the Leafs, the, too, the which, Leafs helps, which, which helps their goaltending with, with, is when your defense gets better as well. Obviously, the Muzzin thing kind of sucked, but that, like, that and with the, the the Tavares and Muzzin thing, Tavar they won game two, three, and four without Tavares. They win, they lose Muzzin like. And like I know Muzzin got the comeback in like game five. Muzz, they lose Muzzin and they still come back without him in game six. And then they dominate all of overtime. I forgot that I forgot someone said this too, but like like it's just like they got 15 shots in overtime. The other two, like was one was like a I don't even know what the other shot. The other one was caught Kanyemi to win the game. They dominated without these guys. Like they you you gotta put one in. I know it's price, but you you gotta get ah, uh, it's just it's brutal. It, like you shouldn't even get to that point that point where you allow that means it's honestly that. infuriating to be it would be infuriating to be a leaf fan at this point just because it's like it's like you're this you're this team you're this good you've done all these things how are you not getting another first round it just to me uh, yeah. it doesn't make sense but that's yeah um again i think what ian said is kind of like most people's like reaction like where do you actually go from here i, I have no clue uh dubass is in for a fucking fun i was gonna uh, say do you do what do you do first do you do you trade players? Do you fire Dubas? Do you fire Keith? What do you do? Fire Keith, I, 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 I brought up firing Keith to a few people yesterday. I like Keith. I think he's a good coach. I just – somebody has to be held accountable for this because this is just unacceptable. I don't know. It's not mm-hmm. Keith after game seven say that Keith even talk to the players. Like, you're coach. Like, everybody's – I was going to say, I'm sure everybody – 
deserves a bit of blame. Like Dubis, Keith, the players, fans. Only 500 fans showed up on Monday. That's just disgraceful. Considering <laughs> 550, 20, actually. Yeah, yeah, 550 after there was 2,500 on Saturday. <laughs> Leafs fans are just the worst. <laughs> no. But Done. I mean, I, 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 if I'm Toronto, I would probably consider bringing all of, if not at least, Spezza back again. Simmons back. I think Wayne Train worked out really well. Yeah, you know, he worked. He's working really well before the injury, obviously. But he wasn't bad after that. He was. You kind of need a guy like him, I guess, especially to stick stick up for those guys. Thornton. He. I think you can give him a spot back again. I don't. I mean. We, you're gonna give uh, what's his name? No, not Joey Anderson. Uh, what's his brother's who Toronto got instead for um, what's his name? Anderson, one of the Anderson brothers. Or you could just bring back Jimmy VC and Travis Boyd and just run that back again next year. Like Jeez. I, I those are the, and then those are the guys that I would bring on forwards. You're not re-signing hmm. Anderson. I feel like you could like, I mean, you can drop one of those guys and you can also, you do have Nick Robertson, which they tried to bring up last bring year. I'm pretty sure for a spark, why are you going to get a fucking 18 year old guy to come in there and try to spark your team? You have multiple 10, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to go there with the contracts. Anymore. I was going to say, you can bring, <laughs> no, but you, no, but you could bring in Robertson and Amirov probably next year. Yeah. I'm yeah. Amirov to, can definitely right. come in to probably, yeah. to probably make up for those two, like for, it's like the money ball thing where it's like, you're just bringing in other guys to replace the one guy. Yeah, because right? you're you're gonna lose a lot of these. Like Hutton's not coming back, and like Marinson, <laughs> please. And then like, uh, yeah, I don't know. We you Bogosian worked well with the team. I think I don't know if he comes back either though. Um, any final thoughts before we move on to our next? Episode? Um, I would say before we talk about roster shuffling with the Leafs with any team, to be honest, I think we got to see what Seattle's gonna do before we. Yeah, yeah. Shuffling. I feel I feel like Justin Hall might be the guy on the way out. Justin I think Hall, he is. yeah. I you think know, he Hall, is. Hall played better than Dermot, so yeah. I feel like he, he had might... the most shots last game. I'm pretty sure for him. Like, it, well, the other thing about Hall is that he's 30, right? Like, or 29. He is getting yeah. like he's he's getting up there. He's a late bloomer, anyways. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I feel like like Scott says Seattle's gonna be something to watch with them. Um, any other final thoughts? I want to move on to the uh, second round. No, I just, I, I guess the Nick Felino trade, I just thought of that now. Just like that was a really, that was a gamble for Kyle. And I don't think uh, that was probably the worst trade. Worst. I, trade. no, yeah. I still don't mind that trade because I know that Dubas was trying to build his roster in a certain way. And when you, when you have a plan, you stick to that plan and you keep going with that. And it didn't work. Yeah. Out. I just don't know if like the price was worth it. We'll see. We'll obviously see like, what Columbus does. I mean, Columbus, I mean, John's not coming back, which is good. Maybe you can get line to actually play like he should play and all that, but that's for another time. That's another well, podcast. Jones, Jones doesn't want to resign. Yeah, Seth Jones. So they're looking to, back. I think they're looking to move Seth Jones. Marner for Jones, Marner for Jones. I saw <laughs> Biexa say yes. Second. Well, Biexa, remember, BX is a right shot defenseman and he works in Toronto. So he'd want to see. A good yeah, he said he was in California today. Yeah, he's in oh, Cali oh. now. Um, Anyways, you want to talk about Kevin BX a bit more there, Scott? Let's move on quickly. Second round uh, NHL playoff series. Uh, Montreal playing Winnipeg. We'll go around the horn. Who do we each have winning the series? Rav, I'll start with you. Montreal, Winnipeg. You're going to me. Uh, I think Winnipeg in. Oh, dude, the, oh, I'm going to get murdered on these ones. I got Winnipeg. I think it's six. Scott. I have Winnipeg in six, too. Um, some um, people listening in upstairs are going to be happy with that one. So, um, yeah, Jets in six. Um, they're, it's a, it's going to be a goalie war. Hellebuck versus Price. I think Hellebuck wins this one. Go Jets, go. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say uh, Jets in seven. Ian? Seven. Habs in seven. I am rolling with oh. the Montreal. I am rolling with the Montreal bandwagon here. <laughs> I rather have. I rather have the Habs roster of players because even though I think Montreal just obliterate, like they just their roster management. I think I would rather have Montreal's players, and I can coach them better than Winnipeg's roster because I think Winnipeg's roster outside of like du- Dubois. I mean, Shifley's really good. Wheeler. 
Dude, Ewers is the best winger in Wheeler, Canada. Okay, I totally forgot. Yeah. Hey, hey, <laughs> Dude, hey, Nick. Hey, are we, are we going to have this debate now? No. I think. No. I, <laughs> okay, I think, tell me. Okay, we can do that debate right now, too. <laughs> listen, I just think I'd rather have Montreal's That's roster it. of players because I feel like I could totally manage that roster better than when, like, better than uh, Ducharme's managing that team, right? Montreal's actually got a decent roster. They just have fucking poor asset management, I find. <laughs> I don't know. Feel- Bergevin just th- does shit and it works. Like, like yeah, be, yeah, be, be, just because, <laughs> no, because they dropped Victor Mette for Eric Gustafson and that was- it worked. It's and the worst it worked. Part, bro. Yeah, <laughs> that's the worst part. Like in the end, it worked. All regular season, it looked like the most brutal move ever because like Mette was doing fine for that team. Like for uh, Ottawa, sorry. I'm gonna get uh, so much shit for that, but anyway, I just uh, I, yeah, I, dude. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take Montreal in um, seven. Yeah, I, I just. I believe Winnipeg is just, I don't know, maybe the defense part where it's, Montreal has better depth than them. I don't believe in Stan Lee and maybe, I don't know, DeMello, like Pionk and all the other, like the main guys, Pionk, Morrissey. Morrissey and Pionk are really good. And also, they have been good. So good. Also, I'm not going against Carey Price, playoff Carey Price right now. I I'm not going to go against Hellebuck either, though. So, like, I don't know. This is going to, this is like one of the best goalie matchups right now. This I was be- going to say, like, Ned and Vasilevsky was, but then I, I, no, it's not. It's obviously not after watching the past, like, few goals Ned's allowed. It's a good uh, segue, actually. Uh, well, I was going to say, uh, very much a low event series with Montreal Winnipeg. Yeah, I, I still believe. Watch. Yeah. All right, Carolina, Tampa, then. Uh, Callum, I'll start with you. Uh, I mean, Tampa's already two up on that. Yeah. So I was going to say Tampa and five. If Tampa sweeps, though, I don't know. Scott? Oh, I man, my heart's with Carolina. They have so many players I love. Svechnikov, Hamilton, Natchez. Hawk and Paw. Hawk and Paw. Hawk Yanni. Oilers, uh, or not Oilers, Ducks. Uh, ducks for, former Duck, Yanni Hawk and Paw. Um, but I think Tampa's going to win it now in six games. Carolina's going to give them a fight, but the, the Lightning are just too good. They're too fast. They're Oh, Point Kucherov and Stamkos are nasty. Nasty as nasty can be. And as long as Vasi's going to keep playing the way he is, I don't think, well, maybe Colorado will be Tampa, but no one in the East or Central will be Tampa. Rapture? <sighs> uh, I mean, at the, before the series started, I said, I think I said Canes in seven. I think I said, and uh, I don't believe, I think it's going to be Tampa in five now. I think, I, th- I think this team pulls out game – I think they lose next game. They pull out game four, but then game five, uh, they lose at home. I, I just, again, with Scott, like they got Ajo, Stahl, Nietzsche, all those guys. Was, like Nietzsche in a few years is going to be sick. I think a lot of the, I mean, their defense is obviously deep as hell. I I don't know. I, I don't, I feel like the goaltending can also, like, we, it's not like Ned's good. He's been good so far. I just feel like it's it's in that like Colorado last year situation where you don't know where, like you got a bunch of guys that could, but then, it worked this year. We're like, I guess you, maybe you wait till next year to like, I guess I feel like Carolina's year I thought was going to be this year where they go far, but I think next year might be that year. I think they're like, they're the, what do you call it? Who said two years away from being two years away? The, the, oh, Bruno Caboclo. Bruno, cause that's like that <laughs> one year. That's like last year. They're one year away from being one year away. Um, I like that actually. That's yeah. yeah. But I think yeah. next year, like, because they're still finding themselves. So I'm fine with, like, how the yeah. team's built. I'm fine with, like, stall, like, the yeah. stall team. And, and the, f- the thing with Carolina is that they're going to lose Brady Shea, but Jake Bean is coming right up. And then yeah. they've got some other prospects in that pipeline, which is going to yeah. be. Again, are uh, are, are they, they, they going to lose Shea, though? Because I'd be happy if Seattle took Nadelkovic. Will they let Nadelkovic? I think they're going to. Well. Yeah. Well, they do a trade. Oh, so, so, yeah, so you have between Mrazek, uh, James Reimer, which James Reimer might be the guy you kind of have to let go to. Yeah, I think James, oh, easy. which is fine because he's. I think he's still like a good average goalie in the league. So I mean, I, I would take, see. I would take, um, you know, Ned okay. versus over like Peter. I think Peter Mrazek. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. think Mrazek's just older. Yeah, I think he's he's not in his prime. He's not that good of a goalie. You can easily sign a goalie just as good as him, but you can't sign a goalie as good as Alex that young. Speaking of uh, Alex, are Hurricanes still paying Semin? Alex I think this is the last year of that contract. Let me see. Oh, Semin? Oh, my God. <laughs> Alexander uh, Semin. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the last year. 
by the way, I had the Hurricanes uh, going to the Cup final this year. Uh, that's uh, that's looking unlikely right now. Um, um yeah. Defense. Um, but I'll I'll say Tampa in five. It's very much look. It's it. The, the hurricanes are kind of down bad right now in a bad way. Like they're not, they're not looking good right now. Um, Tampa Bay is looking really fucking good. Really good. Oh, Holy dude, God. I, 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 people get mad at the, the $17 million over the cap. And I think that's just finesse. You, you can't, yeah. it is like, finesse. That, that's it. just finesse. I hate it, but like, you can't. Oh, you I love it. I, I love it. I think you should be allowed to, because the NHL is so fucking stupid and how they, I don't want to get into that conversation. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm like, but this is going to be like a rule change year. It could be where it's like, they just let the cap run into the playoffs too. And which will, which will cost. They're within the rules, so good for them. They figured it out. But Yeah, I'm not going to get mad speaking, at them for that. Speaking of team, in if you let me segue, uh, speaking of teams that are managing the cap well, the Colorado Avalanche are playing the Golden Knights, and the Avs are up one nothing in that series. But it felt like 3 nothing based on how the, uh, <laughs> the score was in game one. Um, the Avalanche are so OP. Like, it's not even, it's not even <laughs> fair. It's so good. <laughs> like, when you're... When you're defense consists of like these no-name guys that suddenly turn into these crazy well-rounded defensemen Dude, and you have the, a guy like yeah. kale mccarr come in and just shine that's stupid oh and bow and byram's on the way too yeah that's what's that's insane to me they got hit on the way. <laughs> new, new hooks there too like what the yeah, yeah new, 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 new hooks, hooks fourth line center on new hooks a fourth line center on this team that's why it's so insane to me and then Connor Timmins, who was a uh, world junior, he made he shot the puck to uh, Steenbergen, who scored. Yeah. And Connor Timmins is like a, their sixth defenseman. He's their third pick. Eighth. Yeah. eighth. Yeah. Johnson, I would even say, is like their yeah. sixth seventh defenseman. Dude, he's yeah. he's not even like it's. Or I think he was playing six last game. Was he? I think he was their sixth. Uh, Timmins was a, was the th- on the third pair. It doesn't yeah, even so like, matter. This team is <laughs> good. It doesn't matter. Uh, also, I think the the most underrated trade is getting Dev or Devontae's yeah. two second round picks. This guy is like an elite two way defenseman. This is <laughs> two second round picks. I know, it's, like New York, obviously, like we're in a rush to get rid of someone, and like out of him, and two, like, like two second round picks isn't nothing either. But like, like the, yeah, this guy for what is we like, got. Yeah, if you have. McCarr is like a Norris caliber. Gerard played like a Norris caliber. Taves is like on like the brink of elite at this point. Like, <laughs> what do you do with that? <laughs> what do you do with that? I think the uh, skin, uh, the Devon, skin, sorry, right I think Devon Taves had was the top three in Corsi percentage this year. Yeah, or something, yeah. Something, he was something like, insane. Was um, insane. Well, I was gonna say Graves like I think highest plus minus last year in the league. This year it was yeah. like ad, like still as good. I mean, Nachuskin I think is a. Uh, is like could be a possible dark horse selkie candidate like this shit is it, it's insane how this team is built and like they played like that without cadre yesterday like and, i don't i don't get it and the so, funny part about the whole conversation we haven't mentioned mckinnon ratton or lannis <laughs> 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 uh, or burkowski or yost or any of those yeah, fucking yeah none insane of those players. Guys. so um, so question is it the av like winning the cup is it the abs or the field <laughs> I, I, abs. I, I've been abs day one. I, I like the first day of the season. I, it was abs for me. I, I still, uh, I've McKinnon is the like best playoff performer right now. He's the best player in the league right now. Obviously without McDavid, like McDavid out, like right yeah. now he's, he's the, best, the player. best player left remaining. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. and it's, it's not even close. I don't think I genuinely don't think it's maybe Cooch, but like, besides that, I don't think it's even close. But Kucherov doesn't have the dominant play and speed that McKinnon has. Yeah, Kucherov just has such yeah. good IQ. He knows what to do with the puck. McKinnon, McKinnon literally just, has eight goals. McKinnon has eight <laughs> goals, four <laughs> assists in five games. That's fucked. <laughs> <Rant, laughs> Rantanen was throwing shit from back. He did like the, the like dot suit backhand against San Jose, but it didn't go like cross. He went like near post. Oh, that shot from Rand is unbelievable. Yeah, like, I mean... That was Crosby. Uh, again, I still... I like Leonard. I think he's a good goalie. That was a bet. He needed to save that. He really needed to save that. And then yeah. he really needed to save a few of those. Uh, obviously, Flurry's probably going to be playing next game. After oh, that. Yeah. Flurry should oh, be yeah. the goalie. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't think you really give Flurry any rest from now on. No. <laughs> like, I, I'm sorry. I love Leonard, but, like, you can't give any, uh, any and, rest. 
after that. Rav, to be honest, I don't think it's going to matter who's in net. I think the yeah. Addicts are going to win. I, I saw like a lot of tweets. I showed Ian. It's just like you could put both of them in net, and I don't know if you even win. Like, you can I, at the I, same I, time. I want to see the Mark Andre Fleury, like, I can't fucking compete like video <laughs> after this series like that's what i really want to see it's just flurry just going off about how like and vegas is good too like let's not let's not kid ourselves like vegas that's is still a good too a good they team. just rinse these guys like in in game seven this 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 team just rinsed the wild and then they just get rinsed the next game that's it that just shows how much better that team is and like Oh, dude, watching that team play is insane because, like, oh, I don't even know how to put it in words. Like, I was just watching the – I was the <laughs> – if you go to Keith's fitness page – I'm sorry I'm promoting this on the podcast. But like, yeah, no, you just look at the not, background not of, acceptable. Uh, if you look at the background <laughs> of the video, I just you just see me, like, look at the scoreboard. It's, like, 6-1. I just put my arms behind my head. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like really? <laughs> The other um, the other uh, highlight from game one was uh, Ryan – not Ryan Reeves doing what he did. That wasn't cool, no, but it was uh, Eddie Olchek because uh, I was watching the NBC feed. Eddie Olchek's just like, if I'm Colorado, I put my four or five best guys out there and scoring two, three, four goals on this nine-minute power play. <laughs> and it's just like, hell yeah, brother, I'm all for that. Score more. <laughs> I think Makar is the only one who scored, but like, I mean, <laughs> that was a nine minute power play. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, I, I also don't think they were trying, and Makar kind of just like put everything into that one. I think he just needed to get the one. So, like, I think does that nine minute power play count as one power play? So, at least he scores yeah. that one. It, it like, it's like, oh, he's one for one on the power play. Those are nine minute power plays. It's a five and two minor. So, it, okay, it so, basically, so if one for three, 33. Yeah, still, pretty he's still elite, yeah. <laughs> technically. Yeah. Oh, God. The crazy <laughs> so like that team is ugh, once Kadri's back if he's back because i i'm gonna say i'm gonna say for next round because he's gonna be back next round they're making it to next round is that like a question oh this is it this is you're saving game. that for you're saving that for the next round is that they'll make the next round that's your hot take that you're gonna yeah, say like, once they get into the top four then they're gonna yeah. make the finals yeah no once they they still have cadres i'm trying to say like they still can have you, yeah. can you imagine if montreal wins against winnipeg it's gonna be Colorado versus <laughs> Montreal. <laughs> You're playing McKinnon against <laughs> against Evans. Hope and Yemi. <laughs> McKinnon, <laughs> McKinnon, Red to the Landis Cog versus what is the first? Let me pull up uh, uh the, the daily the, face off. They play Tatar, Danol, and uh, no, Jack Tatar's a Tatar's a healthy scratch. Oh, they have a scratch on Game Seven. Yeah, true. Apparently, he's. Uh, there's a question. Oh, have... Paul Byron. It was Paul Byron, uh, Denol, and Gallagher. Would oh, play gosh. Against... No, no, no. It, it was yeah. worse. It was worse. It was Evans, Denol, and Gallagher. <laughs> the thing is, that the difference between Toronto and Colorado is Toronto's first line does all their scoring. Colorado, any line. Will Burkowski had net. as many points as Toffoli did. He's That's their true. second line winger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the thing with Colorado is that their first line is literally if you watch, if anyone watches the game, it's literally unstoppable. And we're gonna oh, yeah. see in um, game two here, they're gonna do the same thing. So uh, I believe right now Weber and Peach are about like here, and then you see Macar is like about here. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like, it's purely them. based on skating. Macar is one of the best defensive skaters yeah. I've ever seen. No, easily. I think he might 100%. be the best. I genuinely like that I've seen, like watching, like watching him, dude. Like I don't think I've seen anyone good on the. It's uh, like, like if you mix Matthias Oland and Sammy Sola. <laughs> stop! Stop! Don't even do that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think Sherratt, Kulak, Edmondson, and especially <laughs> Eric Gustafson. Gustafson versus McKinnon. Why are we talking about like why are like? Is, okay, I don't want I don't want to talk about Montreal anymore. I'm done. No, but I'll, I'll, I'll I'll just say the last thing. If Flurry's gonna do the I can't compete, Price <laughs> also has to be able to do the I can't fucking compete after uh, he loses with Eric <laughs> Gustafson trying to slow down Nate. McKinnon. Okay, I can't get mad at him because he hasn't done anything bad so far, and he has a point in the on the game winning goal. So we yeah. can't say anything. Uh, I, is this a consensus Avalanche sweep from all of us? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, five games, Avalanche and five. five, five, games. Games. Oh, yeah. I, I, five. yeah, that's fair okay. to give Vegas. I think Flower might give you. Or he's gonna steal one, but. Yeah, I'm doing five. Uh, I want to switch over quickly to Boston Islanders uh, while we still got Callum here, even though he's muted. That's fine. He, he, he can eat in peace. <laughs> um, 
the Islanders, the New York Islanders, are now officially the New York Inlanders because that's who I'm bandwagoning for uh, this postseason for the second year in a row. Uh, all about the Inlanders. Um, I might. I don't know, Scott. We talked about this before. I might have to get like some Islanders merch if they actually like go deep in the postseason. You call our first line jersey. <laughs> I kind of want a Barzal jersey because I think that'd be so sick. That'd be super cool. I, but that I guy also... like struggles to score non-highlight goals. It's actually insane. <laughs> <laughs> I actually want to get like I, I, I actually want to get like some Islanders reverse retro gear because I think that's cooler than the lighter blue. I think the darker blue is nicer, but that's just me like being like that's that's just me. Okay, I mean, like, you, hey, like you. Like, you were... I will. I do recall you weren't a fan of the reverse retro jerseys from the Islanders. So I, I just said as a reverse retro, it wasn't good. The actual jerseys were fine, but the okay. reverse retro, like the concept, was missing when it came to the Islanders. That's all right. I'm saying. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Um, thoughts on Islanders, Bruins, anybody? Uh, I I I, wanted, I like the Islanders. I'd like the Islanders. But too. I think Boston's gonna win in six. Yeah. <laughs> That's the exact same thing I was gonna say. I'm like, I love this team. I think they they have a chance of winning. I just still think yeah. Boston's gonna win in six. I, I saw people saying that Matthews was better than Posternock and like Posternock was injured for part of it, like the start, but like I think now they figured out that he isn't the post Posternock's better. If you're watching, if you watch the playoffs and see how dominant this guy is at all points, like like the guy could have scored two goals yesterday too. And he oh, just easy. like like if you watch the game, this guy is the best scorer right now. It's not opinion. just him; it's his whole line too. It's the perfection yeah, line. Berger and Marshawn Um, they're elite. They're up there with McKinnon and Raffin and Lannis Gog, I think, in terms of. I like it just like I think they're better right now. <laughs> like maybe yeah. just because of the two way part of Bergeron and Mar- Marshy. And Marshawn, yeah, like, yeah, true. You can um, argue that. Well, Islanders in six, but. Man, the Bruins are gonna give them a good run for it. Um, that's I think this is probably the tightest series of all four, um, in my opinion personally. Uh, Winnipeg Montreal is gonna be close, but the Islanders Bruins. Winnipeg every, Montreal will be close, but it's gonna be it will be close. Boring. That's yeah, it'll be close, but I don't think I'll actually watch any of those games. Not I don't think I can. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can. Now I'm thinking of it, I'm like, I don't know if I'd actually like go out of my way to watch this, but I don't know. I, um, Islander, I, Islanders in seven from Ian Lenders in seven from your boy um, Biggie. Um, the team, uh, I saw a lot of Bruins fans, which I like seeing them mad and saying that like the, they're the luckiest team ever. The Islanders got so much luck. <laughs> well, meanwhile, Lozon's doing a fucking like no look pass. Like, and then, <laughs> like, 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 I don't know what, like, like, you can't do that and expect, like, oh my God. And obviously, Sezik is score on the breakaway, but come on. You, the, there are so many mistakes that, that, that were made that could have stopped those goals. Come on. At Travis Dermott. Yeah. <laughs> I remember watching, I like, I saw Travis Dermott in game seven do a spin around, and I instantly went to Steve Dangle to see what he said. He's just like, no, don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're uh, banned from doing spin around. Um, that's our playoff second round preview update kind of we're in the middle of the second round kind of already so pretty much just not really previewing anything um i just want to mention uh draft lottery wednesday night be sure to watch our show 4 p.m ravisher might be there callum has not been invited so i don't know if callum will be there i mean he's more than welcome to but i'm assuming he's giving out vaccines to the elderly who's who's mostly taking vaccines right now Uh, right now it's uh like high school students oh so he's giving uh he, he's giving vaccines to people who still yeah, vape. I, i'm i'm poking underage kids <laughs> <laughs> i'd say name the podcast that but i don't think we can i think no. i can no no I'm, don't I'm, no, 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 no. I'm poking kids sounds like uh that sounds like no. callum's comedy special on netflix Facebook. i'm poking cat i'm poking kids Poke. um all right um be sure to watch Jack Lottery show. Uh, Detroit will win, nope, maybe. The nope. Ducks up. will win, not Detroit. I, I genuinely think the Ducks <laughs> might win this. I'm not gonna. I, I mean, it's just a fucking lottery show. Why are we doing this? It's just gambling. <laughs> this is just this gambling. is not. This is not. That's not really oh, gambling. This is gambling. This is gambling. Like whoever's gonna pick if we bet on it, yeah. 
<laughs> are we betting on it though that's the thing nah, can you even bet on this like actually like go and bet three you probably or? could there's got to be some draft some bookies game. yeah there's got to be features um let's talk about soccer for a second uh chelsea beat man city one nothing in a champions league on saturday i will avoid ravisher in this conversation uh callum your thoughts on the champions league on saturday yeah if i'm gonna be honest uh thought man City was gonna win they had a really good season in the prem but uh, I was reminded that uh, once Lampard left and uh, Thomas Tuchel or Tuchel, whatever his name, took in, he had Pep's number. Kante was amazing. That guy single-handedly got him, them to the final. Like, he did so well against Real Madrid, both games, and then so well against City. That guy is like one of the best CDMs currently, and he's not, he's underrated. He is somehow underrated. Yeah, that's what it is insane to me. That he's underrated. Um, Kai Havertz, am I saying his name right with the game winning yeah. goal? 42nd yeah. minute. Um, kind of a boring game, I yeah. thought, because especially in the second half when we all knew, okay, Chelsea's just going to park the bus and then Man City's going to try and find a goal and didn't really happen. Everyone did get injured, unfortunately. In that, game with that is true. Uh, he did get injured. Uh, sucks to see. Um, that's cha- that's a Champions League recap. Um, Harry Kane on the move. Yeah, I had I had listen, Callum. I I brought up one sad thing for Rab or kind of depressing thing. Now I kind of have to bring up one depressing thing uh, for you, Rab. I'll start with you. Harry Kane potentially on the move uh, in, during a transfer window. Uh, I don't. I have no clue where he's gonna go. I I, I have done no research on Harry Kane. I'm sorry. <laughs> Callum, I mean, there's only there's only so many teams that can afford him in the first place. So in England. Not Chelsea. Chelsea cannot afford him after buying all those good players last season. Man City can afford him. They've just lost Aguero. They can afford him. Manchester, you know, Rav, what are you looking at? I just saw the Lakers course. Sorry, where is oh. he? Um, <laughs> Man United can afford him. Arsenal. That's about it for England, I'd say. PSG, but why would he play in France? Bayern, why would he play in Germany? Stays, I think he stays in, in the UK. I think he stays in UK or he, he goes to Spain. And if he goes to Spain, he's not going to go to Barca. Barca just bought Aguero, Aguero yeah. but will Real Madrid want him? So like, it's confusing. Like, it's all all pass of this. Like, when you consider most things, I'm obviously not like up to date, but I think lots of people are saying City, and I fucking hate that. Um, can you can you imagine being the best team in the league by far, and then adding the best player in the league? It, it's called Kevin Durant. Golden State literally did that like a few years ago. <laughs> you ain't wrong. Um, it's well, no, Calum. This is like a, a, a few months ago when Russell Wilson was just like, "Listen, I don't hate this team, but if you are gonna trade me, here are four teams that I would like to be traded <laughs> to." And then the Seahawks were like, "We weren't thinking of trading you. We thought we had something good going on here." It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know, I know, I know, I know, but. But hey, if you were thinking about trading me, just throwing this out there. <laughs> yeah, just I love my wife, but if I had to fuck four other women, I would pick these four women. <laughs> no, go ahead, Ian, in the fourth. Yeah, four. well, hey, who, yeah, who's your hall pass? For real, this actually came up a lot during uh, quarantine. Who's your, who actually is your hall pass? Yeah, because you guys are just desperate and horny, and then I'm uh, like, hey guys, do you guys want to talk about a NHL redraft? Uh, do you want to do that? Would that be cool? <laughs> and then you're just like. Yeah, okay, but who would you fuck, though? Like, let's be real here. Who would you want to bang if given the opportunity? NBA playoffs now. Uh, thoughts on the first <laughs> round. Uh, Rab- Suns! <laughs> Suns! Can go Suns first? Yeah, what's the score? It's 66-36 at half for, for the, the Suns. Suns. Yeah. <laughs> a-, a-, a Disney doesn't play one game. <laughs> hey, Disney doesn't play one game, and then freaking what's his name? The communist does this, dude. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go to this meme page and see what I, I got sent this by multiple. Yeah, I hope you clip this this section. What you what you call him? At Disney no, and 
A Disney and La Communist. La Communist. <laughs> That's funny. Who is La Communist? LeBron. It's just like <laughs> it's just how people like will just say like, washed or something and just like add stuff. And then people just took it to the next level. Like the stuff that can't I can't even say on here, unless this is like a... what the bitch. Oh God, you worse the black worse than that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably. Cal. Let me go. Cal. Oh, you can actually check DMs on. Okay. <laughs> Um, I got I had Suns in six before this. I still have Suns in six. It lo- it's looking okay so far if they win this game. But I'll, again, LeBron James, I will never count him out. Yeah, he's a tough he's a tough guy to count out. But uh, I would like the Suns to win in seven. I think a game seven, regardless of who wins, would be just super interesting. Yeah, I think now with Anthony Davis out for who knows how long. I think he's out for the series, but. Um... It's not looking good in Lakerland. I don't think the depth's quite there like it was or could be. Um, I think the Suns win in seven games, but the Lakers give them a hell of a run. And with LeBron, like you said, Callum, with LeBron, or let me just uh, with LeBron. <laughs> Le Democrat, Le Oscar. Le Oscar. Le, Le Leonardo DiCaprio wins the Best Supporting Actor nomination. <laughs> Le Cry Baby, Le Washed King, Le Kid from Akron, the marathon continues. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, well, Genghis, okay, now, the, the, yeah, they're just like La Genghis Khan, and I'll end it off with La Sussy. Uh, uh, I think, I think the potential best series of the playoffs is happening right now between the Mavericks and the Clippers. I want the Mavericks to win. I fucking hate the Clippers. Thank you. Can Maver- I, can, I, I am a huge you. fan of Luca. He's one of my favorite players. He's fun to watch. That guy hits threes from nowhere, and he can't shoot a free throw. Can I, ju- can yeah. I just say, before we end the Lakers-Suns conversation, um, Wait, let me Lakers in seven. Uh, I, I'll just, <laughs> I'm just saying myself there. I've already said one ridiculous thing about Montreal's roster being better than Winnipeg, so let's say the Lakers are better than the Suns. Um Callum, it's funny you mentioned the uh, Mavs Clippers series because when was they playing on Sunday night or Monday? Whenever the Clippers were playing, yeah. and um, they were up like twenty on the Mavs or fifteen on the Mavs in the third quarter at one point, like just the last couple of games. And I'm like, well, fuck, this is no fun. Like, I don't enjoy watching the Clippers win. I only want to watch the Clippers if they're losing. Like, that's only when they're fun to watch is when they're losing or getting their ass Because you'll see PG start throwing shit up. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, so and, then, and it's so funny to watch that. And that was what was really dis- – this is what I realized about myself, where it's like I don't actually like watching the Clippers win. I just want to watch the Clippers lose. I, I, don't, uh, really, yeah. I, I don't really care about, about Dallas – I mean, Luca's good. I remember texting uh, Fuji, SYP Fuji, Fuji SYP, uh, three years ago when I was in Regina at the Mem Cup and I was like watching uh, Luca highlights. And I'm like, oh, so this is like, this is Lonzo with a shot. And then Fuji is just like, oh, so he could be one of the greatest players of all time. I'm like, he could be, I guess. He's so good. Playing like it. Um, yeah, I, I to finish off Suns and Lakers, Suns and Six. I I, I guess the a, like having no AD obviously does suck a, a bit. Having someone as good as him does suck. Um, I, I guess I don't believe that team is built. I never even thought the team was built well last year, but they obviously proved me wrong because they won. But I still don't believe the team's built that good this year either. Like it's just not. You can't you can't rely on guys like KCP, Morris, and Caruso in my opinion. And it's Kuzma, he's he's been fine. Like he he, I think he he sucks at shooting so far, but he's been fine. Like he's been all over the place defensive. But I, like I, at the end of the day, I don't think you win with this. Like you can't win with this team, especially because if one of your guys is injured, look at him. They play seventh. They 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 drop that far. That's you know what's that, funny? You know what's funny about Kuzma is that he's probably like my dad's second favorite Laker. Like it's LeBron and then it's interchangeable between Caruso and Kuzma. Like for, <laughs> like he doesn't watch enough basketball. He just likes like Caruso, Caruso and Kuzma, just those guys and what they do. Um, um, yeah. I'm going to watch, I think Dame's about to Dame. Dame is the, uh, Dame just hit a step back three to tie the game. I, I just cannot believe what I've seen. Wow. Dame's a unit. Dame just t- I, t- t- a step back game to tie the three, to tie the three. Yep. I can English. I love uh, tying Dame three. 
Uh, Dame hit a step back three to tie the game with five seconds to go, and they're going OT. Uh, biggest surprises outside of Dame hitting that three. Uh, biggest surprises or disappointment and or disappointment. Um, you guys decide in the first round so far. Is I, it the Knicks? Yeah, I think the Knicks is the biggest. Because I was watching Knicks them. is definitely the biggest disappointment. Because, I mean, it got Clint Capella talking shit today, which obviously sucks. If you're <laughs> that was hilarious. Any, that was hilarious. Like, if you're having a guy like him talk shit to you, that's brutal. I you, thought you that exact. I thought that. I thought that exact same thing when I saw that like, today. Okay, it's like if Clint's talking shit, like you have to kind of kick him in the balls or something. Yeah, like, like no they reason. gotta win next game at least. You yeah. can't go on five if he's doing that to you. I, I like D Rose. D Rose hasn't said anything. D Rose. D Rose. D Rose. Like he just said, like there's no way. Like I think he's he didn't say like there's no way this guy's what? talking shit to me, but the guy's like. <laughs> essentially, what are the like, odds? What are the odds? New York pulls a Montreal. Oh, I hope. I feel I, like I there's hope. better odds for that if, than if the actual... New York pulls a Montreal. Um, can you it, imagine and if how it's fucking if it... crazy? <laughs> that like what do they play? They play at Madison Square, right? They'll play at MSG, yeah, MSG on game they, se- at game seven. MSG would oh, be MSG. game seven. That yeah, would be so... crazy. Like you saw the game one, they lost, and you saw how crazy that place was, dude. Like, uh, uh, it, it's it's uh, Randall's been playing like fucking pro. Like Randall just been playing like six fucking nine Eric Bledsoe so far, which also doesn't help. Like I think if he played like he did in the regular season, like MVPs play, they they'd be in a better spot. He's not been helping. He's not. I mean, it, it is his first year, like ever really in this situation, in this like you know playoff situation. But like, yeah, I mean, if if the Knicks, if they keep Rose, they keep this. I think next year they they keep it going. They 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 can make it. They can win a round or two. Yeah, uh, I don't I don't believe they win this round. But if they do, I will be so fucking happy because I don't like watching Trey play. I don't I don't mind the guy. I just don't like watching him play. It's not fun. Oh, just how he foul. He get, get, tries reaching in for fouls and shit. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's kind of like Harden, Harden, but like Harden will do stuff where like you still like watching because he's it's just. He he has these things up his sleeve, and it's it's fun, more fun to watch him than Trey, because Trey's is just like I don't know. I I guess I'm I'm talking like a hater right now, but it's a it's almost like a worse version of Harden. Is kind of like yeah, it. that's what yeah. it is for me. Yeah, but the guy is elite, and I can't get mad at him for that. He's a good fucking basketball player, and he plays the villain really well. Uh, Scott, are you gonna talk about fellow white guy Tyler Hero getting eliminated in the first round, or is <laughs> you want uh... me to talk about Tyler Hero? <laughs> He's so overrated. Uh, yeah, uh, can, imagine, is, uh, can you imagine passing up the chance to trade yeah. with Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero for like Harden? I mean, you have to, you have to. Tyler Hero did get a song by Jack Harlow. Right? He did, so, yeah, like, he did. Honestly, like the only game, the only yeah. thing I care about is Trailblazers Nuggets because the Trailblazers are my team. Um, but yeah, just too bad for Miami. Miami had a hell of a bubble. Um, Butler was unreal. Drogic was unreal in the bubble. Um, I just don't, they just, what, I don't actually know what, what happened exactly, but injuries. Um, Tyler Hero drop. came back to earth. <clears throat> I guess came back. Yeah. He, his shooting percentage dropped off a cliff, which was expected. So, mm, yeah, um, I mean, I, I, he, he was the most, I like him. I think he's a good player, but he is yeah. a, he, he's the most, he was the most overrated player going into the season. And oh yeah. Like 100%. by, by I, it was really funny. I said it was like i think a lot of people said it too not just me but like yep. it was so ironic that the, the heat heat fans were chanting uh overrated to middleton while hero was on the court it, it like that the <laughs> that was a that one's a brutal one from them but uh yeah yeah i i don't believe tyler hero is that good i he can become i think his peak right now is a six man like area <laughs> but yeah. like he could i don't know i've I've been proven wrong before, obviously. Yeah. Many people have. So, I mean, I, I like the guy. I hope he becomes really good. I think he's sick, but he's yeah. not playing good at all. Well, again, he's a one. So, he's got, you know, got to, got to learn the game. Got to learn to take time to develop. And once his kind of – once Robinson wants out of bio, keep developing, keep getting better, then maybe, like, they'll raise his game too. Right? I, again, and it's hard for me to say I haven't been, like, devoted basketball fan at all this year, but – um, the Heat still seem like a good team to me, and I think they might do some damage next year. Hopefully, yeah. uh, it depends on what Jimmy does. I think his contract's exactly. up. Yeah, he's wanting the max, like full if, on. If max, Jimmy's so. still there, then I think it'll be pretty good. But if he's not, then who knows? I think um, another thing. I think last year, Duncan Robinson, like even Dragic, Hero, were all these like no name, like Dragic obviously not, but Hero and Robinson. 
these no name guys. And I feel like Butler pushed them to the like their best. And now that like Hero has a song about him, Duncan Robinson is it is it all well known players that they just have stopped giving that like I need to make my 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 name known. There's not the yeah. There's not the. There's, there's not that same drive that, that was, urge, there was yeah, there last. Yeah. That's a yeah. personal opinion, but. No, I don't even because like always you can see it doesn't look like Heroes worked much on his game. Like from from what you see, I don't know behind the scenes, but from what you see, it doesn't look like he's done anything. It looks like he's the exact same player as last year, if not much worse. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I I I believe Miami has some issues. I don't know what you do with Depot. He's he's way too injury prone. I don't know what you do with that. They Pat's got some issues, but I mean he, the guy's won multiple championships. I don't think he's. I mean he's stressed, but I don't think. It's the biggest deal for him right now. I think he, if he locks up Butler, it's. I think they they got something for next year for the for the fans. Um, I was gonna, yeah. I was gonna say I'm gonna we're gonna move it on for basketball. Yeah. Scott, do you have time to do a good bad intern adjective here? Or do you just want to skip right to the mailbag? I think let's just go to mailbag today. Yeah, sure, let's um, go to mailbag. We're gonna skip our games. Uh, there are some good questions for mailbag. So there are. Do you want to start, there... start with your question first? Uh sure. Hold on. Let me just <laughs> let me just pull up. Um, I was thinking there'd be more questions. Oh, what the fuck? Where is it? Um, Technical so this would actually be kind of funny, but um, this here. So my question, I think this is to everyone in general, but um, <laughs> this is more for Callum. Um, Michelin or Bridgestone? <laughs> <laughs> oh michelin <laughs> Good I, st- choice. I stand Good by answer. that statement good answer i like <laughs> it i i represent my cousin the michelin man um we grew up together uh i i, I oh, yeah. ate him and everything so you know <laughs> <laughs> i kept his good looks I like it. Uh, sexy, so it's all good um michelin is their good tires so go get them good stuff um hey you didn't you didn't ask about my opinion on it uh, i want i want hmm. to say i want to say the only opinion that matters is callum's bro let's be real fine. Only, okay next question fine next question, next question. Um, <laughs> from at key Fernanda. um he's asking for the top seven soccer slash football champs football the proper name but european footy so number uh, one is Tottenham. we're fucking shit <laughs> num- number two a close second is uh uh, he'll shoot, he'll score, he'll eat your Labrador, <laughs> Jisung Park, Jisung Park. Wow. <laughs> what Which team is, was that? It's, it's Man United, man. Man, United. man. United. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, that, I, 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 one of, I think one of the best ones I heard was uh, uh, John Terry could have won the cup, but he fucked it up. Diva. John Terry, that's probably one of my favorite ones that I heard because he obviously slipped in 2000 eight champions league final against man united i think it was and then man united like he slipped on his pen and then man united won i'm pretty sure that's how that works hey bro i'm watching booker do some bad stuff to your team I'm okay can we just go can, can, you, can you round out the seven at least anyways uh callum you got more uh, i don't know much i know white caps yeah i my favorite all-time chant is when the americans chant us a uh, USA. Uh, the, I, only, but, I, the, the only chant they ever have for any sport. USA. No, no, <laughs> don't, no, that's not true. All right, let's, US, move on, let's move on. Let's no, move on. The, the US hey. actually has some good chants. Um, I can't remember them because we, the Americans lost to Trinidad and fucking Tobago in their last important soccer match. So I don't that's remember. Brutal. That's the last um, time I watched a US game. The Storm Surge is a soccer chant, right? So well, the Storm Surge is the Iceland yeah. original, so the Iceland... Okay. It's more of a celebration, though. Yeah, it's not... like I, They might do it during the game. I don't know for sure. I haven't watched okay. it. We need to get Aaron McCraner on here to talk about yes. England's last loss to yes. Iceland in the last Euros. Moving on. Um, we'll, yeah. get, we'll get Aaron on at some point. Question from Kanta. This is for Rav. Is there anyone better than Jake Vertanen in the NHL? No. No, there's not. Uh, <laughs> that's obviously like a touchy subject now with what's wrong with what's he, what uh, happened yeah. to him. Yep. But uh, I don't know. When I when I was staying with them, there, there, I always just 
we'd be watching the games and I'd get really mad at Jake pretending because he, he was brutal to watch and he had four goals, zero assists in 40 games. <laughs> that makes it, a bunch of us right. It does yeah. suck because yeah. there was obviously much better guys you could have drafted and you get him. I guess that was – I don't blame Benning for that one just because that was right when he kind of got thrown into that one and didn't really have his, his – Well, uh, we picked them. We picked them higher than expected to go. Yeah, yeah. that's true. It, it's it, it. We could have picked Ehlers. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. We could have got the best winger in Canada right now. And we could have released uh, the Canucks. Could have released Vertanen and signed to Foley instead. But that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, I'm not. I I can't believe we didn't give him a contract. That's the main reason I don't want Benny here is because he did not give to Foley a contract, and he yeah. is in the second round right now. We've been sitting at home for weeks. It, it's it's brutal. Rav has just turned into Steve Dangle in terms of just numbness regarding his franchise. Like it's <laughs> like doesn't even give a shit. He's just like, yeah, I know Benning did that. Yeah. What else? Yeah. I, I think Steve Dangle lost it after a Zamboni driver beat them. <laughs> no, that was. I think that genuinely might be one of the most entertaining hockey videos I've ever seen. Oh, it definitely yeah, is. It's, yep. it's up there. Yep. Um, last question here from Ian Davidson, a good friend of the pod, a successful oh, yeah. SYP Saturday Selections participant, by the way. He is oh. insane, dude. He's good. He really likes the UFC. He wants the a, UFC. Oh, he got mad at me for only posting one UFC fight. <laughs> yeah. He, didn't didn't he cry after McGregor lost his last fight? No, I was with him. He, he didn't cry. He was just he was he was just distraught. He was he he didn't he was just like. I think he just went to bed after that one. I'm not gonna lie. I think he's just like, I'm done. He didn't want to see anything, which is fair. He's, he's a. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, uh, anyways, Ian asks us about his our uh, NHL and basketball NBA finals prediction. So I'll just say um, the two teams in the final and the winner. Uh, Ian. Sorry, I guess I, I guess I can't really see, say the Lakers right now. It's forty five seventy nine. Just letting you know. Um, <laughs> listen, I'm I'm I'll say Phoenix. I'll I'll put Phoenix in there. No, no, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck no. I'm not putting Phoenix in there. I'm putting Utah. I'm giving my do- my boy Donovan Mitchell the praise that he fucking Let's deserves. Go. Go. go, go Donovan. Go Mitchell. Go Jazz. Even though we've shat on Rudy Gobert so many fucking times on this Rudy podcast. Rudy fucking Gobert. Um, and they'll be playing Philadelphia in the NBA Ooh. Finals. Um, I don't know how severe Embiid's injury is. Hopefully that's... Oh, shit. Up. Yeah, that happened too. Fuck. Um, yeah, we don't know about that. If he's good to go in, like, after the series, because I think they can still win without him. Yeah. Uh, if if he's good to go, then I'd say they, they, they have a good chance to make it to the Finals. Yeah. I have no idea about that. But I will stick with Philadelphia because I think Ben Simmons is cool and I like the rest of their roster. So I will take the Philadelphia 76ers. And I think the Jazz beat the Sixers in seven games. I'm just World watching... Major. I'm not watching the game right now. I just see it's over OT, 23 seconds left, 132, 134 for the Nuggets. And I just see Damian Lillard makes 30 foot step back jump shot. Damian Lillard makes 31 foot three pointer Jesus. as the last. And Damian Lillard makes free throws and one, like as oh. the past three plays. It's a two point deficit right now. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I, uh, I got yeah, you, whoever's going there. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Graf, go ahead for NBA. Uh, well, I don't know. I was, I, I had Lakers and now like, it's got to just throw it out the window. I think this is like a, this is different. Cause you don't get like, I don't think the big teams like the Lakers and like, you know, I don't know. I guess I think it's going to be nets. I think the nets win whoever they play. That's I think that's it in my head, but I don't know. Nets. Just say Denver and Jokic. Just say Jokic. No, I don't. Finals. I don't think Denver still won't win. I don't think they Jokic can. is the most. If Denver, player. if Denver still had Jamal, Denver would have a yes. very good chance. I agree. Yes, because they're doing that injury, win. they're not going to win. Uh, I still, I think. Well, yeah, Nets. I think is just a lock for me. But I, let's go. Uh, Suns. I don't know if the Suns. If Book does this to everyone, then yes, Suns. Yeah, I'm going to say Book also, is doing stuff, dude. He has. What is this? What? How many? I don't know. Book you, is don't to, you don't need to say, man. It's fine. It's cool. Okay. Listen, Rav just takes Phoenix, and he, they're going to lose to Brooklyn. That's all we need to know. <laughs> uh, I'm also they, saying uh, Brooklyn beats Phoenix. I think. Um. I think. What did you say? Brooklyn beats Phoenix. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I have Utah beating Brooklyn in six games. Um. It, <laughs> yeah. That's the lock take of the year. <laughs> are we? Are we? Are we? <laughs> 
are we gonna call ourselves? This. Can we call ourselves the the Jazz Brothers? Like not the Blues Brothers, but the okay. You know what? Actually, that sounded better in my head. Never mind. I take yeah, that it did sound better in your head. Um, yeah, it was better in your head. Um, the Jazz win. I love the Blazers, but they're not gonna beat the Nuggets. The Nuggets will lose. Uh, to... I don't know. You think the Nuggets are gonna win this year? I don't think they're gonna win this game or the series. <laughs> I think the Blazers are gonna win, and then the Blazers will lose next round. The Jazz will come out of the West. Uh, the Nets come out of the East. Yeah. The Nets will choke in the finals, and the Jazz will win in six games. I, I think the Grizz, Grizzlies next year will be the team to watch, dude. They, I yeah. think they could even win one more game this series. I, well, I, the, I think they're the second youngest team in the NBA this year. Or yeah. The young, yeah, second youngest. Yeah. They have a lot of good young players. They have, yeah. uh, they have Jaw. Jaw is so sick. I have a jersey of him. That guy is probably my favorite player right now, honestly. like That guy is uh, so actually, fun to watch. He is amazing. Um, let's get some responses for NHL finals, um, predictions and our Stanley cup winner. Uh, I, I was going to say, I originally had Colorado Carolina. Uh, I don't know actually how the playoffs work now, but can I say Colorado Islanders? Okay. Yeah. I'll say, yeah. uh, Colorado and the Ian Linders, uh, meet and then the, the, the I was going to say the Ian Linders, but no, the Avs probably win in like five games. Against um, against the Ian Lenders. Uh go ahead, Rav. I I hate saying Colorado Tampa Bay. Is that possible or is there... yeah, yeah, that's possible. That's, 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 that's mine. Yeah. Colorado it's Col- Tampa Bay. It just makes more sense. So call does Colorado play the Canadian team? Yeah. Uh, it'll depend on Wow. Seating. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, does it depend on seating? It technically does, yeah. Well, whoever had the be- whoever had the best overall record in the So in it's the... whoever beats it's it's Vegas and Colorado. But they're her, they're they're the one seed no matter what. They're one and two. Okay, uh, and I'm sorry. pretty sure. Uh, I'm, yeah. Unless the Islanders win, mm, that they'll I'm be playing it, Winnipeg yeah. or Montreal. Maybe you're Dame. Right. Dame just hit a spinorama step back three to tie the game in overtime again what with five fuck? seconds. Dame's a goat. Oh my God! Dame's Austin goat. Rivers game winning shot right here. Though. Dame's a goat. Uh, Austin Rivers step back game winning shot. Dame's have, got fifty points already. Jeez. Dame has fifty points on twenty three shots. I think. I, this is in Dame. I genuinely believe is the <laughs> fucking one of the best playoff performers. Holy fuck! Yeah, Come, dude, Twitter's going insane. <laughs> Holy shit! I can't believe this is that. Oh my god! I think you might have to end it here, dude. Um, <laughs> Callum, we'll just quickly before let's we'll do this quickly. Uh, Callum, NHL predictions. Uh, Colorado in seven over the Lightning. Wow, that'd be a really fucking fun series. That'd be if incredible. That, I, if that actually yeah. happened, it, it might. I think it's a good possibility of it happening. Um, oh. I picked Vegas to win the cup at the beginning of the year. I'm. This is the first time I'm gonna say it's not gonna be Vegas. Colorado is going to win the Stanley Cup, and they're going to beat the Winnipeg Jets in five games. No, they aren't. Shut up. No, they aren't. No, they aren't. <laughs> Don't even let's do that. I know what you're doing. It. I only do the hot take. Hey, don't do this. Don't I do will this. give you <laughs> one chance to redeem yourself, Scott, and not pick the fucking Jets to go to the final. <laughs> I'll let give you one opportunity to try. They're telling me right now the Jets are gonna wait. <laughs> the Jets are gonna. Who are the Jets gonna beat then? In Colorado. Season? Colorado. Maybe I don't know. Um. <laughs> so okay, I'll change my pick. Colorado beats the Islanders in six games. You're yeah, telling me yeah. Derek Forbert right now is gonna stop McKinnon. <laughs> You're telling me right now Forbert fucking Logan Stanley. And Demello, three mil fucking contract in the next five years is gonna stop. What's his name? I did this for the content. I did this just for this. (laughs) Okay, all right. Uh, Colorado Islanders six teams. That's the podcast. Thank you very much to Callum for taking the time to be on here. Glad, uh, Callum. You said this was your second podcast appearance ever. Second podcast. Looking forward to more. Well, I admit you might have to win more selections that I actually didn't even. That give a seems cool like goal. a pretty easy thing to do. Yeah, you're right. actually pretty good at it. Um, <laughs> also, shout out SYP Creator Rap for taking the time to join us. He is now going to go in a frenzy over Damian Lillard just making ridiculous shots. Yeah. Thank you, Rap, yeah. for for being here. Uh, and fifty points, man. And thank you to SYP Creator Scott for taking the time to do this and to organize it. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, again, we're going to be on our YouTube channel live Wednesday, 4 o'clock Pacific, to watch the Red Wings get the first overall pick. Um, we're going to be... Did I hear the uh, du- Anaheim Ducks? I said the Red Wings. I will edit out your part if I have to because you know I will. <laughs> Come on, uh, we- and we will pick Luke Hughes first overall. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you 
it's gonna happen too. Our That's game, totally- our game two of the last Stanley Cup Finals podcast will be out on Friday night. You can listen to this podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Watch our reactions on YouTube. Holy fucking shit! I can't believe this just going on with just Rab talking about Luke Hughes at the end there. Just there. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody, for watching, for listening. It's greatly appreciated. We'll be back again soon. Peace out.